Hello everybody, welcome back to James and Flav for now. Flav is here, I'm here, and we're live on the main channel. Wild, wild scenes. How are you, Flav? Uh, I'm alright, I've got a question for you, Jim. <laughs> okay. Just been percolating for the last week or so. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah. Is Vincent Company a fraud? <laughs> you can't get it is out of he... his head. Can't has get it it. Been on... I just watched... Has that been on your mind, is it? Oh, no, I just, I just saw, I just saw a Tottenham Hotspur side tear Burnley limb from limb sure. at Turf Moor, and so I was just asking the question: Vincent Company has he been found out? Because this is a man who I wanted, in fact, was desperate at times for him to become the new Spurs manager. So, is it fair to criticise Vincent Company right now because Burnley's squad isn't Premier League level? You would, you could argue, maybe. I would suggest that football comes at you fast, you know, and uh, it's coming at him incredibly fast right now. Quickly, very Could, quick. Because someone's got to go, haven't they? Someone's got to bloody go. Someone he's he's to. got too much credit in the bank with the owners. Because yeah, it was five like, year deal, like, that's a, half, that's a disaster, uh, isn't it? Yes, yeah, disaster way to happen because you can't, you shouldn't have that much credit with it. He basically runs Burnley Football Club from top to bottom. He's advising them on how they need to, to run transfers. Coming up, you need to make more profit on the transfers. This is, um, you know, this is a good signing because of X, Y, and Z. And they're just going, yes, yes, Vincent. Yes, anything you want, Vincent. That's, that's fine. Which is, you know, they, they, he knows more than they do, which is fine, right? Sure. But it is, it can be problems. May if, come if, to the... if the fish stinks, where will it stink from? That's it's the real from... question here. Well, yeah. Things from the head. Yeah, you I mean, they've only played three games, and uh, that's the harsh thing with the uh, the league table. Uh, here's a are Everton actually the team that's bottom right now? Or yeah, Everton? I know what you're saying. Uh, do you know what I mean? Because they played one game extra. <laughs> like, uh, yeah. What's the truth here? So right, guys, uh, welcome to James Flav uh, for now. We are normally behind the bloody paywall, aren't we? Just noshing each other off. But uh, today we're live. Um, We've got everything you need. We've got an epic reframe. We've got Jim's Big Laugh Award. We have a lot of comments on Tottenham. Couldn't, could they? We'll get into that. We'll get into that. I've got another question when you're ready, Jim. Okay. But I would also like to know, in the chat, people that are here right now, some, some truths, some hidden truths. So is it a hidden truth that actually Everton and Sheffield United are bottom of the league currently? That's just, that is just, is that a hidden truth? I don't know. You tell me. But let us know any in the chat, and we'll read some out. Yes, Flav, go. Would you? Well, would you? Would you? Would you? Would you rather have the point that Everton and Sheffield United have got, or the game in hand that Luton and Burnley have got? You got to have points on the board, right? You got to have the point. points on the board. Are you? Is that? Are you a points on the board kind of guy? Are you a more uh, games I'm, rather I'm, than the games? No, I'm a, I'm a games in hand kind of guy. I, oh, I, yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah. Like, yeah, because if you hark back to the season before last where we usurped Arsenal to the fourth place. We had our games in hand. We had our games in hand. And it's not nice being caught. Because it's, it's the motivation. These elite Premier League footballers need motivation most, most of all. Tactics and motivation, right? Sounds obvious. Mm. Some managers cannot do it. Games in hand with a, point to ch with a, with a, a target to chase is all the, all the uh, motivation that some of these players need. So, yeah, I'm, I'm a games in hand kind of guy. Okay. Um... Yeah, I've got another question there. Go could, on, well, just quickly, could could they? Could, no, not, no not, yet, not, that, not yet, not yet, not yet, not yet. So early, Jim. Yeah, football's good, isn't it? Yeah, football's great. Football's great. I'm just gonna um, get the championship uh, table up. Oh right, yeah, no, right. Really. Why are you doing no, it? I just like doing it <laughs> periodically. I just like doing it. Um, or maybe last how week's are, fixtures. Um, how are QPR doing? How are great question? Is that the question that you wanted to ask? That's no, but I'm more question. interested in that now. Okay. <laughs> Amazingly, it's, football's mental, isn't it? Football's mad, right? So I, I'm feeling good. I'm feeling good about the odds. Yeah. I feel like we've got something we can believe in here. Um, you changed like the wind. But, <laughs> but while, but, while uh, but what's mad is that for years I've just been fed up. Even like months ago, I was fed up with QPR finishing sixteenth. That's the sort of joke around QPRs that we just... 17th, 16th. We just finished 16th. We just finished 16th. All, well, look at there. us now, not Flav. 17th, and I'm absolutely buzzing with it. <laughs> I am absolutely buzzing with it. Come on. 
it is, um, isn't it amazing? Like the league table actually has very little bearing on how happy a supporter is, because you look at uh, when Spurs finished fourth, we were miserable and we didn't understand why we were miserable. But like an eighth place, fin- uh, if we were eighth or tenth now under Postecoglou, we'd be like, well, I'm I'm happy with this. It's 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 who's leading your club and how they conduct themselves is a massive impact on how happy you feel as a fan. I've just changed the uh, title because I think people are saying stuff to me. By the way, just uh. Just, just so you've all seen it. Is that what everyone's saying? Someone's saying, someone's saying about uh, R.I.P. Joe Rogan. What does that mean? He's not passed away, is he? Or is this, oh, they're doing no, the thing on me. They've done the thun- thing on us. I, I, I was like looking at you going, are you sure, Jim? I don't like this game. <laughs> we can't, you can't, you can't, look, because we're live, you can't just throw in, but oh they're my throwing God, it Joe, in. Joe Rogan. I know. I'm saying to the people in the, in, in the chat can't go, oh my God. Joe Rogan dead at 52. Or whatever. Nah, How yeah, but we said it a couple of podcasts ago, didn't we? I know that, Jim. But they're going to disrupt the flow uh, of the pod. You've I parkied us. Some... We just got parkied. No, no I, not me. You. I'm, I got, I I knew got it parkied, was... yeah. I you got did, yeah. And what happened was, I was saying something to you. Very specifically. I'm sorry, and I wasn't listening at all. You wasn't listening? Nah, nah. And, and do you remember, that's what you used to say about me, that I wouldn't listen to you. But I thought I'd Joe go, Rogan had just died. <laughs> I thought Joe Rogan had just died. That's quite a big... <laughs> no. Hey, hey, hey. Is... All right, no more R.I. Right, now I know R. Bruno Mars. <laughs> Bruno Mars is dead. Oh, my God. Jesus, not Bruno. I like that. Bruno Mars is good. Like, everyone knows who Bruno Mars is, but we haven't really seen him for a little while. But it... Clever. Yeah, That's yeah, good. yeah. Yeah, it's genius. That's good. It can't be something too obvious. Like Joe Rogan's all right, but Bruno Mars is that's that's perfect. Yeah, that is. Right, good. Um, sorry. What would say we, what you um, said again? No, get fucked. We're gonna oh. start and move on to the next subject, which is could Arteta do it at Brisbane Raw? Could he? Could Pep? May. Could anyone I do think... what Pascal Coglu did at Brisbane Raw? I think we've been looking at this the wrong. I when I saw you tweet that. And um, we'll get onto Tottenham. They couldn't, could they? We'll get onto it. We'll get onto it. <laughs> we'll get onto it. Um, it's a good point that no one ever makes. They always go on about, oh yeah, but can Eddie Howe make the step up? You know, convincing company make the step up. Well, hang on. Could Jurgen Klopp do it? At... I mean, he kind of did. But could yeah, Mikel but, Arteta but saying, do were, it at Brisbane were question... Hall? Well, no, he's exactly. going backwards. Could he? Could he? Because he needs six hundred billion pound to be a good manager, million pound to be a good manager. Pep yeah. needs to have the club that's most powerful in the league. There's is... no evidence to suggest that he could do it at Brisbane Raw, like Postecoglou could at is... Brisbane Raw. Is there a pot? You say Brisbane Raw, funny. Is there a possibility? Bris- Bris- is it Brisbane or Brisbane? I think it's Brisbane. Brisbane, Brisbane yeah. Brisbane Raw. Yeah, Brisbane. Oh, yeah, we've got some um, comments from the Aussies. The Aussies are all over the place, by the way. Mate, our I'm our Aussie emails. fans are all oh, their heads I'm, are gone. I didn't know there was as many Australians as there is. They don't know. What I to think do all with all of them are in my DMs. Are they right? Yeah, they they're all no over dicks them. yet. Though. Not one dick. Really, that's disappointing. Not we have one, got not one Jim. And I was, I we have got it, no, we've got Nosh chat. If that helps, we have got a bit of Nosh chat this week. I think we um, we got past five hundred patrons, by the way. So uh, get yourselves Did ready. We? Get yourselves ready. Shit. It's on. Um, and we got the worst. We got we got dad chat. We got who do you think we got? Someone's someone's upset me, love, and I'm gonna just let that be known. A couple of good top mm. comments and some good talking points as well. Mm. Um, but back to Queen's Pot Rages. And uh, mm. is it is? I I it's not yet. Because look, let, let let's. There's an elephant in the room. We're both supporting wonderful football clubs right now. Okay. Oh. Hot what, but are, you need to have some context because no one really knows what's going on at QPR. What? Mm. Why are you suddenly happy? What are the last couple of results? What, what's happened? Right. So, QPR lose their first game for Neil, and it, it was brutal. Yeah. <laughs> you were talking about it. I just saw the on chat. The, we, we... I just saw the chat, and Max gone. Don't do it, Jim. <laughs> I'm not doing it. We... I'm not. I'm not doing it. I'm not saying it all season long. I don't care if we're 20 points clear. I'm not saying it this year. It's not happening. Okay. What I will say is that everyone, everyone was laughing at the lads and they were laughing at our boy Gareth, okay? Just because he likes to dye his hair and have it long. Just because he lets, people were absolutely hammering him because he likes to grow his hair. And he's in a band. 
Who's the weird one here? Well, because he's got a hobby. Yeah. Who's weird here? The guy with the guys decided to grow his hair, or the people having a go at him for growing his hair. Get a lot. Yeah, of I think it says more about the people having a go at him than it does about Abs- Ainsworth. Absolutely. You all laughed at me. Well, you're not laughing now. <laughs> well, yeah, that's it. And I am. I have. I very quietly have got a list of names of people that gave no belief to the man that was Gareth Ainsworth. Now, I was concerned myself. And there is a long way to go. We are five games into the season. However, he's brought through a couple of older guys. And there's a yeah, steeliness okay. to the team right now. And we've beaten a Middlesbrough side who don't worry about them being 24th at the moment. Last season, we're in the playoffs. Right? So, and the other game that we won was Cardiff for 19. But the performances have been great. The performances have been very, very strong. We've got players to come back. And Gareth Ainsworth is, he is the best manager on the planet to have if things are going well. He's the best. Because he's like, he just, he always, he's always saying about giving everything. And then you believe that they are giving everything because you look and you see the scoreline and it says 2-0. <laughs> oh, come on. Yeah, I look, he's, he, when he... The way he talks and having a manager that defends your team and, and defends your the performances of your players and takes responsibility for things that go wrong, it's so refreshing because you know that he's, he's dealing with it and he's coping with it. Whereas Conte, it was like, oh my God, he's not coping well with this. He's not coping well with this at all. Yeah, He's throwing them all under the bus. Whereas he said, um, Van der Ven was speaking about how how much fun it is playing football at Spurs and training. Yeah. Fun little, they are a fun little club, Tottenham. They're a fun little club. Like, let's not do that because, yeah, exactly. Um, Yeah, but he said it's so much fun playing at Spurs because my manager tells me, play out from the back, find the pass, carry the ball if you have to. Do not kick the ball out of the football pitch. Even in times where it feels like it might be the best idea, hold onto the ball, find your man and play. Not Gareth's, not Gareth's play. way. Not Gareth's way. And, I, and he said, and my manager told me, if I mess up and make a mistake, it's my fault. It's, it's Postagoglu's fault. I'm allowed to make mistakes. Right. Inevitably, there will be some mistakes, but players at that level don't really make mistakes that often. You watch him kick the ball in the net against him for the now. See, Gareth's, Gareth's very different. He's, um, you know, he's empowering, he but he's like, can we find touch? Can we hit the corners? You know, <laughs> do we need the ball here? Do, is this ball in the wrong half right now? Can we pop get it, it in out. the other? Can we get it there? Get it out and squeeze. Can we squeeze? Can we defend for our lives? Can Can Azmir save eight one on ones? That's what he's saying. And, and I, <laughs> can I you do that. these things? Yeah, but I mean, what they both do do is. They do like put it on their backs a little bit. How? Uh, uh, what's it going to feel like when Tottenham lose a game? Is it going to? I think it's going like, to. Is it going to be a little? Is it like pop? No, because you lot are you lot are on drugs right now. You lot yeah, I've never yeah, we... seen like you are tripping. Yes, you are so high. Yes, yeah. It is like that. It's like having that third pinger in a, in a club <laughs> at three a.m. That's how I feel right now, and then we're all feeling like that. It's. It's it's a great. Well, this is this is the thing we had. We did the podcast, Fighting Cop podcast, yesterday, and we were talking about this because we had some questions that come in that went, "Yeah, but look, shouldn't we all just take a step back here because, right? You know, it's not going. You're not. We're not going this season unbeaten. We are going to lose games." And we were like, well, "You're right." <laughs> you should take yeah, a little burp take, at the same time right, as I was talking. Right. There. Little burp. Are we uh, to just um, have a uh, yeah? We you know it, there will be times, but I was like, just fuck off with that energy. Isn't it nice the way we feel? Wow. Well, Shouldn't we enjoy this moment? Obviously, we're going to lose games. The way we play, there will be games where we get done. Right. Couple but, of que- couple of questions here from the chat. Yeah. James Corky says too high, and uh, Rebel oh, a couple, Rebel Wisdom says more. pinger. Yeah, I don't know if I'm allowed to say that. Yeah, maybe not. Maybe Am I? Google it. On your Google channel. It. Google it. Yeah, Google it. Uh, Google Urban Dictionary. Um, yeah, so it's... Uh, yeah, we're ecstatic. And why, and why not? Why not? If we beat Sheffield United at home, is that a question? 
Should we ask the question? Can we? Well, could? I mean, Obviously not. Yeah. Uh, we're, let's not waste our breath. But. Yeah. yeah. Like, I'm, I'm not even going to entertain what a ridiculous <laughs> idea that would be. Like, yeah. something, nothing yeah. more mental would happen or has happened in football. But. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, Wait, I'm, all waste, I'm, I'm wasting let, my let, time. I'm wasting your time. <laughs> I'm wasting everybody's time here, Jim. Yeah. But you see. have to ask the oh, question because yeah. if you're not asking the question and you're not serious about football, and is all I'm asking is, can we drink? <laughs> well, have you got the. I, 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 what I feel like you're asking is, do they have the capacity to? Which is the title of today's podcast. And what I will say, so last thing on, on QBR, <laughs> it's my channel. Sorry, last thing on QBR. I get it. <laughs> Gareth, Gareth Ainsworth, like in his interview, because basically he was going, tempering expectations. If we survive, then that's great. And then we had a couple of performances. Like a lot of people thinking we're going to go down here. We're going to be doing, we'll be doing much better than that. And then we beat Middlesbrough and he sort of half blurted out the possibility of a, of a, and I'm literally laughing saying it, of a, like a playoff possibility, right? Right, now hear me out here, Blav. Give me the space I need. Now, Gareth Ainsworth was previously manager of Wickham Wanderers, and no one saw them doing anything ever, ever. Now, mm. but Gareth was the manager of Wigan Wanderers. And they got themselves into the championship, despite it being a story that no one could have ever imagined or believed in. So what I'm trying to ask you is, could they? <laughs> I mean, I mean, no. Obviously no. not. Obviously. No chance. No. No, no chance. No. no. But, I mean, that is an interesting point you make about Wickham. I was unaware of that. Well, that's okay. Let and me that's... ask you this. Wickham, did they... You want to answer that? Yeah. They did, they didn't did. they? They yeah. did. They, they bloody did. well did, yeah. They fucking did. Yeah, they that's, fucking that did. is interesting. Right? Yeah. That, is, that is fascinating. <laughs> yeah. That is fascinating because the thing is that no one thought they could, but then they did. Yeah. And that is interesting to me. Indeed. Let me... I just want to... Can I just go, go to the chat just quickly? <laughs> yeah. D there's uh, uh, Dicey. He says Spurs currently categorically cannot. I understand, mate. I get it. I understand. But could we? Yeah. You're not listening to Flav now. You need to I'm, listen to I'm what not... Flav's saying. He's saying yes. He's saying no chance. Absolutely not going to happen. Let's not. not we don't even, have to worry about that anymore. About it. I don't even want to talk yeah. about it. But could they? Could we? Just a question. Um, right, I've got a whole Tottenham section in terms of the comments last week. Uh, if you want to join us and become a patron, then you can do so. Links in the description. We would love your support. Uh, Tom Hurd, hang on. His, I just thought this was interesting. Pahutan. P -R -I -L -A star. Terrible. Sorry. He said, simple sentence, I remember a manager that had proven his salt in Japan. Yeah, I remember him. I know exactly who you're talking about. Who are, who are we talking about, Vlad? We're talking about one, Arsene Wenger, who was manager of Grampus 8. <laughs> yeah. And, I, and you, people won't remember this. I remember this specifically because I was listening to TalkSport at the time. And they were said, Arsenal have appointed a manager called Arsene Wenger. And I was like, Arsene? Arsene Wenger uh, uh, from Japan? <laughs> He's going to be shit. Yeah. Don't have to worry about Arsenal for the next few years. But was he? He was a fall in my side for nearly 22 years. Yeah. I used to, we used to meet, I was talking, my mate, my mate Ricky, who's a big Spurs fan, he does a podcast with me, right? We'd go out in the garden and we'd be smoking magic cigarettes, right? But most of the conversation was centred around... When is Wenger going to go? He's been here for ages and they're so good and they're always good. When is he going to leave? And then in the end, they forced him out. Yeah. Well, I mean, and, and that's a cautionary that's a tale for you guys. In 20 years' time, when you're the club that's won all those things, then, you know, don't just hound him out. That seems... No, that seems we're, we're cogly though. It's like everything he does feels like it's a plan for the next thing. And I don't want to talk about a Tottenham that doesn't have Postacoglu. But he is so good. He is so good that he will end up managing anybody he wants to. Four games in. Um, four games in. <laughs> amazing. There is a well, That's there the thing about Postacoglu. He's always thinking about the next four games in, mate. Four games in. 
Ian, um, you know Ian from uh, Ball Street days, big Tottenham fan. Yes. I played football yeah, yeah. with him yesterday, and he said that his dad uh, got in touch with him and said, "I was listening to the Fighting Cock. Those boys never learn. They never. <laughs> <laughs> those, those boys never learn." Um, well, this is we're getting messages going. You've convinced me we can win the league. <laughs> well, I, I can't believe I'm saying this, but I think we're going to win the league. <laughs> <laughs> Well, do, well, I mean, I do, do they have the capacity? So you've got a couple of good comments here. Let's get the uh, Jim Big Laugh Award out of uh, the way. Actually, here's a comment. Lucky Kai Brown. This is mad. I've been a fan of you both for quite a while now, and somehow I've only just realised that this is a thing. He didn't realise that we had a podcast. What, and, uh, how... Max Kelly said, you lucky bastard. You've got five years of amazing <laughs> podcasts to catch up on. If anyone is new to the podcast um, and have are brave enough to go back. Um, as I say, we've got, I think we've got like 120 mailbags now on the Patreon, uh, which is, it's just great background. It's great. It's a great thing to listen to if you want to feel more intelligent about yourself, I would imagine. Uh, but also yeah, we've got the I podcast agree. as well. Um, so yeah, I mean, good luck to you, Kai Brown. Let's know how you get on on your journey as you sort of work through the annuals of time. And actually, this sort of journey of Flav, actually, because uh, Flav's, Flav's um, mood is, is definitely like changing. So Tom Hurdle says this, absolutely loving how Flav's general mood and demeanour over the last few years has been a reflection of Spurs' style of play. Is this applicable to all football fans? Marley Clark said, I'm a Liverpool fan. Yes. Uh, yeah. Toodaloo number two said, I'm a Leeds fan. Yes. Bielsa was the yeah. happiest time of my life. Under Jesse, Mar- Under Jesse Marsh, I moved to the USA. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> In the chat right now, it would be interesting to know how, who do you support and how do you feel? <laughs> uh, yeah, and, and do you know what? It's obviously, because, because people watch the podcast every week, you could see my mood changing and how happy I was. And, th- and that, no doubt, will happen this season. Sure. This is happening to fans all over the place all of the time. Yeah. It's, a, it's, a, it's, it's an incredible thing. It's an incredible thing that, 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 that football, the impact football has on how happy you are. And you can't, you can't do anything to influence it. Mm. It's mental. And people, and people go, well, now look, I'm checking out. And a lot of people do, I'm checking out, right? I'm not, I'm not letting Spurs, I'm not, I'm not going to pay attention to Spurs and under Conte. I'd, I'll watch the odd game on television, but I'm walking away because this is not good for my health. And I understand it. Back in the day, I'll go, You're, what kind of fan are you? You've got to support them through thick and thin, bollocks. Thin. Thin's the best, but it feels the best. Yeah. During the thick. No, 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 no. Do you, know, do you know thin's the best after it's been thick? You need it thick first. That's the thing, Jim. You've got to pay your dues. Mm. But it's how you cope during the thick. But you're right. You need the thick before but, the thin. And, and but, this is the but, thing. is, But you do need thin. You need you, some you need kind some of thin th- to hang on. God, you need, do you need You know, thin. like, there's, what's that, um, there's that? There's that documentary film, and it's about this guy who's trying to... Uh, climb this m- mad mountain and he's got yes, like the gri- north is it north i can't remember what it's called like but like yeah. basically like the grip that they do it's like so thin like that's yeah. that's what like that's a a two a two nil victory against middlesbrough going into the international break is like a it's like that it's like a massive yeah. boulder i can just get i can hold, hold on to, on to, on to yeah. pull myself up for two weeks yeah Buzzing. the thing is but the problem is if you have too much thin and not enough thick then nothing, you don't feel anything. Yeah. You need the thick to feel something. Because <laughs> the fin doesn't really cut it if there's a lot of it. Yeah. That's why you're, mate, like, that's why you're, uh, you should be thanking Conte. 100% I am. I'm f- just supremely grateful to the lessons learned through M- Mourinho to, to Conte. Because without that, I wouldn't have this. Okay. I've been stretched wide open with the thick. Yeah. For the last three years. <laughs> now it's time to heal with the fin. <laughs> It's horrible. It also makes complete sense. It's just wild. <laughs> uh, okay. So, uh, Chadley's a Man City fan. He's very happy. He's a bit bored, well, he, though, Chadley. He's a bit bored. This is, this is what I was talking about. <laughs> Too How much thin, thin do they need? You need some it's thick, son. Thin. You need some thick inside you. You need some <laughs> thick and some thick fast. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, so <laughs> where is that? Someone's at West Ham. <laughs> Someone's at West Ham. But, uh, so, Tom Gumbley's Birmingham. He feels excellent. Adam Sullivan, Brentford. I feel fulfilled. Owen Lawrence is Tottenham. He feels central. Trust me, I'm not a builder. What a name that is for, for <laughs> Notts County. He feels euphoric. 
How Notts County getting on? Uh, Jim Bell, Somehow Morecambe fan, very optimistic as we had six players contracted at the start of the summer. Now we have the best home form in the league. Thick, thin. Thin. Thick and thin. James says Notts I'm County a Brim. currently <laughs> rump in the league. Six. James uh, says six I'm... played, four wins, one draw and one defeat. James says I'm a Bruno Mars fan and I'm upset. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Just for a record, Bruno Mars isn't he's, dead. He's fine. He's fine. He's fine. Man United, uh, that's how I feel. Man United. Yeah, how do you know? I'd like to know how Man United fans. Disarray. Are they in disarray? Well, yeah, that's it. So well, it's it's up... it's, on every level, they're in disarray. Every level. You've got the... the, the Share prices. Got... Well, you've got share prices, Glazer ain't saying, selling. You've got Anthony alleged to be doing what he's done. Yeah. Um, t- um, you've got Sancho having a public rouse with Ten Hag. You've got Maguire and Johnny Evans finishing Premier League games. <laughs> you've got Casemiro that's a shadow of his former self. No recognisable number nine other, other than some mentally expensive Danish kid that no one's ever heard of. Does look good though, didn't he? Did look good when he Does he look good? In I what respect? Tell me. Vincent Janssen uh, looked good for six months, mate. I thought it was a bit of, um, yeah, I mean, yeah, but so. What's, what's the penalty? <laughs> should have been given. Should have been given. <laughs> yeah. A, a, a football from a, a football 25 years ago was, wasn't good. So this guy doesn't, that doesn't work like that. That's Do you cool. genuinely think that Norland is, is the guy for them? I'm quite excited. I was excited by his substitute appearance. Were you not? I thought he was a bit of a bully, got a bow. Casemiro's getting, that... Casemiro getting a hard on. If Casemiro gets a hard on, I think then that's a good place to be. Sorry, Chadley Links, who's a Man City fan that we're talking about there, he says, I'm not bored, James. He said, I'm enjoying Man United losing as well. Also enjoying the good while it lasts. <laughs> it won't always be there. The thick's always on the, around the corner, isn't it? The, uh, do you, as a Man City fan, do you to, to get because you've not got any thick? Do you do you try and sort of um, what's the word? You sort of um, enjoy the thick of others. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Like a Man yeah. United, do you have yeah, to yeah. sort of enjoy? Garden, do you get your kicks out the Man Garden United Freud, thick, yeah. or yeah, Schadenfreude, or or whoever yeah. else? Um, I, Johnny I, P's I chubbed up. Yeah, he's a Tottenham fan. <laughs> chubbed That's up, great. is he? Um, well, so someone else is fully engorged. Wonderful, wonderful to hear. Um, uh, Liam Doohan, were you at the game? Middlesbrough fan feels terrible to say the least. Did we? Uh, did we? Did we deserve it? Did we deserve it? I don't know. Um, Jim Big Laugh Award. Bryn United said embarrassing moment I had watching the pod last week. At 25 minutes, James mentions Shane Ward, and I understand we thought he said Shane Ward. Now, Shane Ward, uh, <laughs> Shane Ward, Boyzone. he finished second in the X Factor? No, he won it. Okay, here we go. I'm not sure why I thought being an X Factor winner, this is in like 2007 or something, would qualify someone as a sportsman, but I did. As soon as I heard it, I think we were talking about Australian sportsmen and the sort of mentality of them. As soon as I heard it, a grin appeared across my face. I quickly swiped across to Spotify and played my favourite Shane song, No Promises, <laughs> <laughs> and sang along giddily, realising James must also love his music if, his, if he's on his mind. After the song finished, I went back to the pod and rewinded 10 seconds to understand the context of why he said Shane Ward, only for a single tear to gracefully slither down my cheek as I realised my fatal error. I quickly looked around to see if anyone. I love had... how that occupied so much. Oh, he's still going. Okay, good. Sorry. I quickly looked around to see if anyone had caught me in this most embarrassing moment. Wiped away the tear and got back to watching. Jaffin is truly back, boys. Looking forward to the rest of the season, as are we. Um, yeah, that made me laugh. Do you know, so... just just on 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 rubbish music. Um, do you know why Richarlison is back in my good books? He's my number nine again. I saw that. I saw that, yeah. Yeah. Well, you, he had a fight up... with an 18 year old kid because he insisted on putting Taylor Swift in the dressing room. That's leadership. Yeah. That's leadership. Standards. That's standards. The, standards. Uh, Don't uh, bring that shit into here. This is Brazil. <laughs> uh, Peter Hudds, RIP Shane Warne. Finally, one that I know that he's sadly, but definitely. He is, yeah, he has. Wow, that kills me. Uh, Right, sorry, back to the Jim Big Laugh Ward. We've got to gear change. We've got to move. We've got to carry on. It's what Shane would want. Both Shanes. So, <laughs> the only this is from Alex Feld. A few people commented about this. The only other time that I've seen Flav this joyful, and this was a top comment last week, the only other time I've seen Flav this joyful is when children are crying. 
467 likes. <laughs> <laughs> Nick. That's something about. Nick replied, clearly you've never been to fleet services. <laughs> 56 likes. Uh, Legal Dino then. And I just wanted to run this by you just in case. This wasn't true. Legal Dino said, you joke. But years and years ago, Flav and I visited Sports Interactive's office. We were shown around by Miles Jacobson and all. Honestly, Who the bloke... Who said that? Uh, let me read it all out. Legal Dino. You joke, but years and years ago, Flav and I visited Sports Interactive's office, which is where Football Manager is made, where we were shown around by Miles Jacobson and all. Honestly, the bloke never cracked a smile. As we left the office, we saw a happy, smiling toddler paddling along on the pavement, chasing after a pigeon, then immediately slip and face plant on the pavement hard. Amidst the mum's screams and worried passers-by, I saw Flav crack a broad grin. What an absolute legend. <laughs> I so that's so weird. I know exactly what he's talking about. Is this actually true? I don't remember. Yeah, it's what? True. What do you yeah, mean? It's, it's true. So, um, so we, I used to, I used to write for a games magazine called The Player. I think this is right, right? This would have been fifteen years ago, probably 10, 15 years ago. And we interviewed Miles Jacobson at their offices. We went to Sports Interactive. Oh no, no, no! It was in a pub, I think. Or was it? Mate, I was certain I this was I've a been... wind-up. No, it was in Old Street. Yeah, it was in Old Street, where their offices were in Old Street. It wasn't. This is all <laughs> true. I can't remember that guy's name, but I know exactly who he is. And I've not thought about him in 10 years until this point. Right. This is crazy. That uh, is mental. It is true. I, I don't remember the kid falling over. And I don't think I'd laugh at a kid hurting themselves. It's just when they're in emotional turmoil that it's funny. I saw What's his name? Flav he's, crack he's... a broad grin. <laughs> Alex, can, can oh, Alex Feld. Alex Feld. Oh, no, no, no. Sorry. Alex Legal. Feld. No, it's not. It's not. It's not. Legal Dino. Yeah. Yeah. Can you get in contact? And if you have copies of that magazine, I'd love to see a PDF of it. That is um, mental. I can uh, see his face. I just can't remember his name. Okay. Well, I think that is the winner. But uh, sort of hot off the back of um, Flav's love of children crying. Um, Zez Woods also wrote this and it did make me laugh. He said, I'll never forget when Flav described the still frame of a child crying as the money shot. <laughs> <laughs> it still echoes there in my is. mind sporadically and I try not to think <laughs> too deeply about it. The money shot. Uh, right. Yeah. Uh, Tottenham. I couldn't get there. Right. So we've got some more Tottenham bits, but I, what I would like to, we will go to the the league table. So the, Should we skim the Tottenham bit? Please? Yeah, well, I just think there's some, there are some interesting comments here, so I do want to read them. But, right. I, I, but okay. I'll also explain why I've titled the video what I've titled it. So, okay, James Sheffield. Flav, I remember listening to the Fighting Cock podcast during the 15-16, 16-17 season, back when Spurs were playing well and us fans were enjoying seeing good football and having a bit of a backbone. Pretty sure it's 16-17 when we went undefeated. Uh, well, yeah. Okay. You said something along the lines of don't get suckered into thinking that this doesn't mean anything without winning a trophy, because that's the only thing the critics have on us now. This sounds exactly like you. We'd gone from the dross under AVB to, to some great stuff where opposition teams started to defend deep. Somewhere along the line, we all forgot this and started to buy into winning a trophy at all costs, which has led to where we all are. Postacoglu has said he wants the opposition to fear Spurs and to play entertaining football. I just hope we don't forget this time if we have a decent season. Yeah, it's great. It's, that is, is exactly right. But it's the nature of football, unfortunately. And let's hold on to this. Great feeling. And look, if a, a seventh place finish is what we end up with, it's not a problem because this will be a fantastic season following Tottenham because we'll have fun. It will be good. But so, so yeah. inevitably, it will turn to, can we win a trophy? And, ne and inevitably, all the conversation is going to be around, can Spurs do it if we're anywhere near it? The fact that we've gone out with our first, um, the League Cup, like the first, the first hurdle. opportunity, first yeah. hurdle, uh, would suggest that we probably won't win anything. But it doesn't matter, because the journey is where it's at. I I'd like to know how everyone feels about this in terms of, Newcastle fans, I just saw someone saying, are Newcastle in trouble? Harley said. So, like, the, I, I always find it, I find expectations really interesting in football all the time. And I think, say, like, West Ham, I feel like are doing quite well right now because they're kind of what Villa were last year. Villa or what West Ham were last year, where they'd had a good season the season before and then 
spent a bit of money and the expectations are there. Same with Newcastle, who are sort of, you know, on their on the rise still, but have now had that initial like enjoyment boost. Same with Arsenal as well. Whereas Tottenham is yeah, the expectation hot off the fun. thick, aren't they, Spurs? So yeah, they're it wouldn't, it wouldn't into some that's thin. exactly it. You're hot off you're hot off the thick, everything's thin, right? Yeah. So yeah, and, and, and the problem is is you're like people like Newcastle and Villa to a certain extent, but definitely Newcastle. They're bordering on, you know, taking some thick. Sure. What, like, what, uh, James? Do Newcastle have the capacity to win the league? Okay, let's let's go there. Let's let's have a look at the. T- Here's the table, which which means nothing, doesn't it? The table right now. Although, or does it? <laughs> to me, it means something. Yeah. All right, so. So here's here's why I've got a title this through. Right. So uh, so I had a, a guy called Alex who has a YouTube channel called The Different Knock, which which is an Arsenal YouTube channel. Really good. Go check it out. Uh, we have a clip from the Ripple Effect that's on the channel um, yesterday talking about Sancho. And, and I thought he was Alex was really impressive. So was um, Dev Bajwa as well. Um, but Alex said this, right, because we we're asking about our sort of Arsenal and, you know, the season so far. And he said, when I think of Arsenal, I expect to a point, or he used the word capacity, he said, uh, there's only four games that I don't expect Arsenal to go into and win that game. Those four games were Man City home and away, Liverpool away, Man United away. He said, otherwise, there's absolutely no reason why Arsenal shouldn't win 34 games right so he then said that so with that in mind Arsenal have the capacity to win the league which I thought was interesting because we all know that Man Man City are favourites right and we need to find a different way of talking about it essentially so who has the capacity to win enough games this season to win the Premier League, that's what I, I wanted. To, that's what I wanted to talk about because I thought yeah, that's really, I, really interesting. I, that is interesting. So you've got you, in these games, if it's just a one-off game, Arsenal have the capacity to win each one of them apart from the four that you've mentioned. And yeah. if they do that, then they win the league. So that's the capacity. Yeah, and if we have a look at last year's uh, league table, which you might not be able to see straight away, but I'll, I'll describe it. Essentially, yeah. if so, Arsenal. He's saying that Arsenal could win thirty-four games, right? They have the capacity to win thirty, um, thirty-four games. Man, Man City last year won twenty-eight games. So yeah. again, when it comes to capacity, let's say you need you. Let's say you probably need to win twenty-eight, twenty-nine games, and you probably need to not lose more than let's say six. If you want to beat Man City, probably less. But yeah, I know probably need ninety points, don't you? You probably need ninety yeah. points. So that's winning. That's winning thirty games, isn't it? Yeah. So yeah. With that in mind, who has the capacity to win thirty games in the Premier League this season? So that means that's eight games you don't kind of have to win. I mean. The answer is no one. <laughs> do you think? <laughs> but that's no. Well, Man City couldn't do it last year. Win thirty games. So who, if they couldn't do it last year as the best team I've ever seen, then who's going to win? Who's no, but no, win? I'm not. No, no, no. See, so this is where you got. This is where you're wrong. You get. You're getting in the way of a good time now. You're getting in the yeah, way. I know, of a good I know time. that. I know. Step that. to the Sorry, side. I apologize. Step to side. I apologize. Hold my hand yeah. and join me on yeah. this walk. Okay. I, I will. I apologize. Who <sighs> has? the capacity to go on such a hot run and the momentum feels good. I don't know. You may be brought in a new manager, a couple of new players are sort of really catching fire. You've got goals in the team. Jim, Who can we, do we, that? I think we, I mean, the, if, if you look at it, Jim, right? Like we, this is just four games for Tottenham, right? It's just four games. It's not even a conversation, really. But if we then, and this was, we were pre-warned, right? Or pre, we were, this is, basically we had a Celtic fan post this message. It's gone a bit viral around Spurs Twitter and community. 
and he's accurately described what will happen with Postacoglu. And the only thing that hasn't happened that he will, that, that he guaranteed would, was it will work against little teams, little teams, right? right. It'll work against lesser teams sides. Yeah. Yeah, it's tin pot clubs. It will work against them. But then when you really fall in love with Ange Boys, when you beat one of the big boys playing sure. it, and I don't include Man United are in disarray. I'm talking about if, if, Jim, we're talking about that momentum. If we get that momentum going, if we win at Arsenal for the first time in 24 years, well, would be the second time in 24 years in the league. If we do that and then beat Liverpool, then you have to talk about Tottenham as a title. Can They right. are potentially in the place okay. where they might have the capacity to do it. Right. If we go, we And are... also, if we go off the back of Arsenal, because Arsenal were in a similar. Big ifs. There was a similar feeling around Arsenal last year where they had a really good start, and everyone's like, they couldn't, could they? Arsenal actual title yeah. contest. There was that question, right? And that's so. What your the aim for Tottenham really is to get to November and that to be a title of a video, isn't it? Yes, exactly. Right. Well, yeah, if you're talking YouTube and <laughs> YouTube stuff, yes. Yeah. Title of a video at November. Yeah, that that would be good. Okay. So, do you know, do you know what's Go on. So, uh, to answer, answer that, because well, I want to move on to some, a couple of other teams here as well. But with Tottenham, yeah, I want to move on. so do you feel? Yeah. Do you think you have the capacity to do it, or what? You would suggest not. You don't have the capacity to be to win. If the you ask, you're asking me genuinely, like in my heart of heart, do Tottenham in their current state have, have the capacity, capacity to win the league? Obviously not, but. Could we? I don't know. Um, <laughs> it's a great question. Yeah, it's a great question. No, look, I'm. I we are at the start of a journey. No, we're near the end of it. So I would not, in re, in 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 real terms, without bullshitting and, and pissing around. Or no, we're not, we're not near that yet. But what I do find curious is Liverpool. Like a lot of people are tipping Liverpool to be the main title contenders, and that is curious to me. And I was hoping that you might enlighten me on why there are so many Liverpool fa- or, or fans of any club saying that actually it's Liverpool that are t- uh, that they're that are Man City's closest rivals and not Arsenal, which seems to me crazy. Okay, so yeah, so in terms of answering this question, I believe Liverpool do have the capacity to to win the Premier League. Well, then explain to me why. Before I do that. We have 1,580 people watching right now. If you could be an absolute legend and stop what you're doing and just hit the like button for me, that would be wonderful. Thank you. Uh, I thought you were going to say uh, uh, become a subscriber then. Like, it's not 285, no, not enough for you. Let me just tell, I'll just take a like. I mean, if you'd like to subscribe, that'd be wonderful. But it'd be, I think what I would say is is the pod's been done really well in these first couple of weeks. An international break is a killer for oh, yeah. um, for momentum. And thus, any kind of help would be lovely. And if you're enjoying yourselves right now. Okay. Liverpool. So Liverpool have had a tough run of games. Like, so far. Right? Can we, mm. can we find that? Results. I think... So who have they played so far? Oh, for God's sake. I'm trying to find Liverpool's games. Forget it. Hang on. Can we go to Liverpool? Forget it. I, it's, okay, well, I've started now. So I'm finish. Right, <laughs> Liverpool. The thing for me with Liverpool, and I had Liverpool, and I've just done it again. Forget it. Right, I've done <laughs> So, Liverpool do have the capacity. Because. Why? I'll, I'll tell you why. Because they have so much firepower. This is what I said at the start of the season. The front line the, is insane. The front it's line disgusting. has. Front line. They have so much firepower that I think has gone massively under the radar. The, obviously, the concern is the defence, and I get that. I actually thought that Endo was pretty solid in that Newcastle game. I actually quite enjoyed him being there. I didn't. Um, I haven't seen and I wasn't focusing on his performance for the game against Aston Villa. And it, Aston Villa game was a very different one because of the way that they played. I just think unlocking is important and being able to unlock when it's not kind of feeling good is also really important. And I feel like with Sabojlai, Salah, McAllister, Jota, Diaz, Nunez, Trent, you have so many players there that can can unlock and so yeah. even if you concede two you can score four and i think there will be multiple times this year where liverpool destroy some teams 
And I think they have the op- they have the possibility as well of going from a team previously. I think they've been very like they were very heavy metal when they were at their best, right? And I think with the likes of Trent, Zabozlai, McAllister, they can manage games better. And I think if they can kind of get their confidence right, and Klopp can sort of maybe get out of his own way in terms of that previous philosophy, which I don't think he's outrageously beholden to. Mm. I think they can build that those levels of confidence. And then as that occurs, I think what happens then is Liverpool get quite scary because of the names that I've just reeled off. And because of the net, because of that coincided with the form and the goals, teams will then do what a lot of teams do against Man City, which is curl up into a bit of a ball. And that's why I think that Liverpool aren't the Liverpool of last year. And I think they could go on a hell of a run. And I think they do have think, the capacity to do it. I think also that that the, the, the storylines around Casado and Lavia choosing Chelsea kind of has altered, or made a false perception of what's going on at Liverpool. You're yeah. speaking to a couple of Liverpool fans before the season started and they were a little bit frustrated that they didn't get those midfielders in. And then, and then they did. Mm. And I have no idea if they're good enough. Endo's good enough. I'd never even heard of him before they'd signed him. So I don't know what kind of player he is. He may be quality. Um, <clears throat> He's fine. Um, yeah, he might do a job. He might be exactly what they need just to uh, to make sure that, that midfield in front of the back line is as sturdy as it needs to be, given the fact that it's somewhat creaking. But saying that, they've only conceded three goals in four games, and that's only bettered by Manchester City. So... Um, so, yeah, so that's why so Liverpool Chelsea, could have the capacity. Yeah. I mean, I think it's actually, in terms of the games that they've played, some of them are a bit confusing here. Like, do we, what is the true Villa, if you know what I mean? Like, the Newcastle game got out of jail, if we we're actually honest, really. Newcastle, like, they, they, they couldn't, I mean, they couldn't handle them, really. But that, in terms of getting out of there with an away three points against Newcastle, that's, that's amazing. Um, yeah, obviously Chelsea is a little bit disappointing. I don't know. I just, I just think firepower is the thing for me with Liverpool, and that's why I think they have got a, a chance of of doing something. Like when we're talking about they're... the capacity to do it, Arsenal obviously yeah. have that. I, I, I believe Arsenal have that capacity to do it as well. Uh, without question, there, there's no, there's no without doubt. I, I still think Arsenal are City's, you know, biggest threat. Yeah, I still th- I think Tottenham are on an incredible run right now of four games and of actually three games and <laughs> and it's great fun. But the top three feel like Man City, Liverpool, Arsenal more so than yeah. ever. Liverpool are far more free flowing than Arsenal right now. Arsenal it feels like they're sort of throttling games a little bit, but I don't think that's the worst thing. This, that's the thing I think, and that's the reason why I put Liverpool above Arsenal in my predictions was I. It's the striker position. Like Gabriel Jesus obviously scores a great goal on the break there, and that's uh, that's class. But like, in terms of having again that sort of striker firepower, I do still think you need that. And and that's why I say like with Tottenham scoring the five goals, like to have won the games when Richarlison's been pup, and to then bring in someone like if Son goes on and scores twenty five goals this year. Like that is a proper striker that you've got there, right? Obviously, he's mm. not as physical, but you you play differently. That's the one thing I struggle with Arsenal sometimes. It's like well, they just don't have that out and out striker. I know that's not what they're totally about, but that's why I put Liverpool above Arsenal. I I also wonder how much of um, this tinkering that Arteta seems obsessed with doing at the moment will impact them. It, obviously, no one should question Arteta now, right? No. He's done enough yeah. for all. Uh, yeah, for all fans to recognise that he's an elite coach, and even being, even though he's been handed six hundred million, which is unprecedented, pretty much, unless you're a, a nation state, um, to to <clears throat> backed by a nation state, what he's done with that team has created uh, one that is capable of winning the league and probably would win the league if Man City didn't exist. Yeah, but but he does. There, there's some of the criticisms you're hearing from Arsenal fans at the moment, while they are loath to say anything negative about him, is why aren't they playing the same system as they played last season? Why isn't Ben White starting at right back when he did it so well last season? Why is he trying to change it, basically? And they might have, they might have a good, uh, good reason to say that because they, they did run Manchester City close. 
But there is this, uh, there is this sort of questioning of what Arteta did early doors because the football at Arsenal isn't as free flowing as and, and as conclusive as it was last season. Yeah, well, but... not towards the end when they completely bottled it, but the, before that, complete bottle job. Champ- European football's on its way. That's going to be really interesting to see how Liverpool navigate it. Although they've got far more experience in it, Arsenal navigate it, Newcastle navigate it again, like. You know, before before a ball's kicked, you you kind of go, oh, I I feel like this will arrive and this will arrive, and that's that's where like I'm intrigued to see how Arsenal kind of cope with it because I think sometimes Europa League football is obviously not great because it's a Thursday, but in terms of a sort of um, I was chatting to my mate yesterday about Chelsea and he was saying he was really annoyed about the team they put out for the Wimbledon League Cup game because he changed the whole team and he was like, play the same team, pump them. 5-0 get that kind of cohesion and confidence in the team and then you can start to like to 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 play better in the premier league uh, and so the the opposite of that is is can be champions league football if it becomes difficult but arsenal got quite quite a good group in terms of teams with the the capacity brighton man united newcastle united any of them have who has the most capacity out of those three well, you say Newcastle, Brighton, and who? I think Brighton could easily finish top four, right? Yeah. Would you agree? West yeah. Ham. West Ham are in there at the moment. No. 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 You've got Europa League football, and they're not. They're playing better, but they're not. I don't think so. They're, although I would say that they are better without Rice now. I would say that as a squad, it's much more balanced. I agree. It's not the amount of times you see smaller clubs. I say smaller clubs. Clubs lose their best star player and it really doesn't impact in the way that people think they would. And obviously I've got a dog in the fight with this whole yeah, game. Yeah, as a smaller stuff. club who's lost a player, yeah. Yeah. Cheers for that. Uh, but no, to answer your question, Brighton, I think, while they don't have the capacity to win the league, obviously they do have the capacity to finish in the top four and it will be interesting. And I, you know, I hope to some degree it would be interesting to see. And I hope they do it. Cause that, but it would be interesting to see. And they play. They do play. Like that. Wait, I know this is moving away from the conversation, but where does the Zerbi go next? Feels like a big, big job, right? You're talking. Could, could he? I do. I'm intrigued to see. Could he? He's quite volatile at times. Like, and Mental I wonder, could well. he? Yeah, yeah. Sort of 2002 hair. Uh, could he? Could he cope with the pressure of the spotlight of of a big, big club? I think that will be the thing that will get thrown at him when that day comes and surely it will come for the chat Give quickly go, guys though. and Give i know pe- people are screaming they're going stop talking about football on this football channel and i hear what you're saying um but i would just like to know what's the what capacity in terms of the amount of games that could be won of man united and chelsea can like man united with the players that have come in if they're better than you think that they are in terms of you know vincent jansen up front are Man United capable of winning 25 games this season? And no. Chelsea, how many games are they capable of winning? What's the capacity there? Can I say something? I'm yeah. gonna I'm gonna be bold here. I think that neither Manchester United or Chelsea finish in the top four, right? That's not a bold statement, I don't think. But I do think Chelsea will finish above Manchester United. Do you? Yes. Wow. Pochettino will get it right. Oh, he'll get it right. Just enough to finish seventh or sixth. That's interesting. Whereas Manchester United, I, I'm i not convinced by not, Ten Hag. Not feeling I, it. I, I've never been convinced by him, but I'm almost, I'm, I'm doubling down on it now. I'm not convinced right. by him at all. And I think, I don't think Manchester United and Chelsea are anywhere near the conversation for a champion, for, to, to, win the, to win the Premier League. So, obviously, we've got the table from last year up here. So, look, some people are saying 11 ga- they'll win 11 games. That puts them mid-table. Because I think it's interesting. The wins, how many wins do these guys get? 18, look, 18, 19 gets you knocking around the Champions League. So, 20, 20 wins gets you Champions League football. This is interesting, isn't it? 20 wins will get you Champions League football, probably. So, can these guys get themselves... 20 wins. One thing I'll say about Man United is the cavalry's coming, I think. I think that, that team that they put out against Arsenal is not their team. Like, Dev, again, on the Ripple Effect, yes, uh, which came out yesterday or the day before, Dev made a really good point because I was like, oh, you know, Man United are a bit defensive. 
I wasn't I wasn't being fair really because he was saying in terms of the cards that they were dealt, you've not got your left back, you've not really got the striker that you want in there, you've not got you took too long to get the midfielder that should have been there. Mason Mounts out, you're like all of those two centre backs out, and then well, another so you, one gets you, injured so as you well. Have to play like Burnley, they were rubbish. They were play rubbish the cards that you're dealt though, and so but but the point is is that's not man that's not Man United. This is a club that spent more money than anybody else. Like, you can't get, give excuses. All right, you might give excuses about one performance. You've got to look at the state of the club and where they're, what direction they're heading in. They've spent a fortune on average players. The fact that Anthony is still, and he won't be playing, I guess, for, in, in, for the foreseeable, but, or maybe in the next couple of games, they might, might take him out of the fire. But <laughs> They're running out of players, aren't they? Well, th- yeah, but this is stuff off the pitch, isn't it, that they can't control. Mm. Um, look, look there, I... I, I see. I saw nothing against Spurs that made me think "Wow" at all, and I saw even less at Arsenal. And I get it; those are two big games away from home, very difficult places to go. In White Hart Lane, right? But I just didn't see enough. And I might be wrong. I'm probably wrong. What the fuck? I, no one should listen to me when I have an opinion about football, anyway. But that's my gut feeling. That's why I'm I'm sticking with. No, they don't have the capacity. I don't think they win twenty games. Yeah. Look, do they have the capacity have to have plus thirty goal difference? This is what I like to look at. You're more of a goal difference guy, aren't you? I, I, I just, I, I kind of think it's important. Goal like, difference basically... does reveal a lot. I think you're right. I yeah. think you're right. Uh, I uh, Man, United, Man United qualified for the Champions League last year with plus twelve goal difference, which is tiny. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. Very poor. People are bad enough. Sorry, plus fifteen. My bad. Plus fifteen. Plus I just 15. Big Daz says, who, are, who are these two? Don't, wa- don't watch this. It, like, it, who are these two? Come on. Go and, have, go and watch. Out. Go and become a patron. Go and, no, no, don't go out. Oh, Stay right, in. Go with Maureen. In. Clever. Maureen. Clever. Clever. Maureen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you need to find out about these two. Yeah, become a patron. Uh, yeah, become a patron. Right. Uh, let's move on. Mind blown. So we had this a couple of weeks ago. Oh, Gucci with a super chat. I'll be splitting half of that with you, Flav. Don't worry about that. That's bullshit. You will not. I've never seen half of any of them. Thank you, Gucci, though. You're a legend. Uh, you guys deserve more know, super chats. Know... Well, let me read it out because it could lead to more super chats. You guys deserve more super chats. Here's $10. It's your job. No, Thank you. I don't want... I mean, I know it's your, your channel, but I don't really want super chats. You keep your money. Spend yeah. it on your... You, you know. Well, shh, 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 shh. <laughs> all counts. Right. So we uh, a couple of weeks ago we had uh, yeah. uh, they were appreciating the content. You know what I mean? <laughs> I know. I know. I know. Yeah. A look, a gift horse in the mouth. They. Uh, so yeah, mind blown. A couple of weeks ago, uh, we blew Flav's mind by letting him know that if you click your fingers, the sound is actually coming from your finger on your on the palm of your hand, and it's not incredible. the fingers. You're not clicking your fingers. The sounds coming. Do it from now. Your hand. Do it now and enjoy it's mad. it. It's crazy. Look, it's there. It's there. <laughs> yeah. There. Yeah. So, uh, we want more of that. Get involved in the comments That's and it. blow our minds. This did blow my mind. I don't know if you knew this already. But here we go. Murdoch, 1994. Something that I found mind-blowing is that a peanut isn't a nut. But in fact, the emphasis is on the pea. And it's actually a legume. What's a legume? It's like a pea like you know like a bean right no that hasn't blown my mind i couldn't give a shit about that but so a peanut's not a nut focus it on that it is a nut no it's not no it is it it's is a legume. It's clearly a peanut it's when a legume. you think of, when you there's not a legume i don't know what a legume is you're just making words up the, these listen when someone thinks of a peanut when you think oh what's a peanut you think exactly that it's a nut but it's not that's what if I... you think, but what's it, what's a nut? And you're thinking, you're thinking, KP nuts. That's I'm what you're bl- thinking, peanuts. I'm, that's what I'm saying. Take in, take in what I'm saying. Let it blow your mind. Legume. Well-known legumes include beans, soybeans, chickpeas, peanuts, lentils, lupins, grass peas, and other things I've never seen before. What's that? Wikipedia. Anyone can write Wikipedia stuff. Anyone can make that stuff up. Right. Yeah, but I mean, surely that's right. What are the seven legumes? There, there, there. And that's that's the US government saying that. All right. 
Well, I have been educated today then. So your mind's been blown. And that's the whole point of it. So can you blow yeah. our minds? Please do. Epic. Do you, do you know, Sorry. can I, can I have a question? Is it? Right. Yeah. So the five tastes, there are five, and this is made, this blew my mind the other day. So what are, what are the most common tastes? Right. You sweet. want me to answer? Sweet, yeah, sour. Sweet, sour, salty. Yeah. Bit, bitter. And there's right. one more, which I've never heard of. Oh, uh, Onami. No. Um, umami. umami. Yeah. Who threw that in there? <laughs> like what? What sweet, sour, salt, bitter, and then umami? Umami. That's all um, made it up. It's like um, it's savory. Like the yeah. It's the lovely one. Yeah, it's the, the lovely, lovely one. one. It's the lovely one. Yeah. 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 Very good. But I thought my missus was telling me the other day it's umami, and I was like, um, <laughs> Two... I think you're you're having a stroke. That's good because uh, that's never, no one. That isn't a word. But yeah. <laughs> Primary buffer panel says um, when uh, when Newcastle playing well, what does that taste like? Toonami. Very good. <laughs> Epic reframe. We set this up last week. Uh, if you are watching for the first time, we you guys make the running order each week. And Epic reframe is something where someone turns... I want someone to reframe it epically. For example, Oren said that he saw someone justify Mudrick's transfer of £89 million as a good deal, suggesting that he is discernibly at least 1.0853 times better than Anthony, who cost 82 million. <laughs> so it's a good deal because <laughs> because Man United spent 82 million on I Anthony. That. that means that Mudrick's a good deal. <laughs> yes. Yeah, that's good. That's exactly what we're looking for, that stuff. But yeah, because he can More. just about get away with suggesting that Mudrick is 1.083 times better than Anthony because Anthony hasn't done much. Got another super chat. We have. Of course, a big one. Wow. Twenty dollars. Should you wedge, Sean? Are you sure, mate? Yeah, are you sure about that? I'm not answering the question, but are you sure? Flat, how do you think Tottenham will cope during the AFCON? Um look, this no this is why they're worried. This is how you know fans of other football clubs are absolutely worried about Tottenham because <laughs> rattled, oh, would shit. you say? Yeah, rattled. They, 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 Jim. They're going. Oh shit! They're quite good. Let's have oh, Afcon. Fuck yeah, that's it. That'll fuck them up. Afcon. How will we cope? Uh, we'll struggle because Basuma is the best number six in the league, and um, right, he will go. But Marley are shit. I've had it on good for, good form. Good, good advice. Good. I've had it on good. Fa- Someone told me that they're shit. <laughs> so hopefully Marley are shit and go out straight away. Uh, who else do we lose? Yeah, who else do you Perhaps lose? Are, Perhaps so, yeah. That's not Midfield. the end of the world. Midfield. We can deal with that. And that's it. Perhaps so, that's it, isn't it? I don't think we have any other Africans. Yeah. Flat big, as well. Big oh, Daz. Look. I've been a patron from day one. Oh, he's saying, who are these two? Right. That's how I know that one hour of football chat is way too much. Fair enough. We're, we're moving on. We're moving on. Uh, K- Kermpit. <laughs> not sure if this could be considered an epic reframe. But I find it interesting to find that with the new added time rules, every team now has Fergie time. And if these rules had been in place back then, we would have been given 20 plus minutes. Yeah, I thought about the Fergie time thing the other day. It was like, Fergie time is sort of, um, is no more, is it? Like, you won't get that extra time. It's already, though, it's already starting to taper out that. Is it? What, it's calming down a bit, is it? Well, don't you think that like, the time added on is already? I'm it went really from like se- seven, eight. You haven't noticed it? Seven or eight minutes first half. Now it's like typically gone back to like three or two. Right. So I think it's. I think it seems to be. People are seems, like wasting time less, which is good. It's nice. It's good, see. yeah. And what I thought was stupid and hated it, and would only favour the bigger teams. I'm actually not. I'm not hating. And then when you get to seventy minutes, and you're like, well, there's still thirty. There's still loads of football to play. Yeah. It does change your your outlook and philosophy. Intrusive thoughts. It's going to be tough, guys. Hang in there. Think differently. Says so intrusive thoughts. So this was something. What we were thinking about. So I um. I sometimes have intrusive thoughts about um. I think we're talking about like f- like I struggle with forks sometimes. In terms of like getting your fork caught in your teeth or something. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I know. Yeah, I know exactly what you mean. Yeah. Uh, Right, intrusive thoughts. Literally every like, time I'm... Right, I'm wanting to kick kids who have Arsenal shirts on. Or yeah, Chelsea shirts. Them... Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you just want to boot them. You would never do that. You would nah, never do that. It'd be a terrible thing to kick a child. Who nah. would do that? But your brain goes, kick him. Kick yeah. him. 
I get that with dogs a lot of the time, like the middle bit. It just see, it looks very kickable, but I would never, of course. <laughs> uh, literally every time I'm making... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Come on. Go on, go on, go on. No, no, no. no it's nothing, nothing. Literally every time I'm making roast potatoes, the thought of me slipping on the kitchen floor and falling face first into the searing hot oil haunts my mind. And when cooking anything, I always think of slipping with my mouth ajar, ramming into the granite work surface, akin to that scene in American History X. American History yes. that scene is horrible and stays with I never, all I, the time. I can never watch it. I can never watch it. I always, always turn away. Um, yeah, I know, you know what you mean, yeah. I, I mean, whenever I'm high, high up, um, I, uh, I, you know, just obsessing about falling. Like I, I'm, I've been on six plane... Um, fuck. I've been on six plane journeys, right? And what I could—I don't know if I should even say this. Cause I don't want to put it in people's heads, but I have it in mine every time I fly. No, I'll leave it just because it's yeah. No, I'll leave it. Okay. But yeah, no, you're right. These horrific things happening to you. Oh, I got no one. Uh, CJ Thompson, intrusive thoughts. Uh, walking in public when a ball is kicked in your direction by some kids nearby, and you wonder what would happen if you just belted it into the next street as far as possible instead of tamely passing it back to them. <laughs> 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 what would people do? The closer you are to a body of water or a large fence, the stronger the urge, and I fear my future self will be unable to resist. Very good. I, I, there's nothing I, I love seeing. Being in a park, and seeing the ball roll to someone else, uh, sort of a group, often like a couple with a guy there, and seeing his inner monologue going, right, what do I do here? Like, do mm. I kick it back? How do I kick it back? How do I, yeah, How do, do I add that, a bit of <laughs> Do you add a little... <laughs> do you like to, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Float it in? <laughs> yeah, I'll, so, uh, and have I got... Drill the, it? Do you, you know what I do? Oh, here's what goes through my mind. I go, I want to take a touch and like ping it. I want to ping it just so you know... I can kick a football, right? I can play. But then just yeah, before, yeah. but I know they can play. But then I, I think just, bef just before the moment happens, I think, what if I shank this? I'll look like an utter knob and I'll just tamely side, side foot it back. I'll always side foot it back. Because I'm scared of slipping also, as well because of my shoes. Yeah. Also, when you're with your missus, I think she's going to love this. Watch this. <laughs> yeah, she can give it. <laughs> yeah, she can yeah. give it. I'm going straight home to a blowjob yeah, after yeah. this. Watch S this. Step aside, babe. Step aside. Step I'll, do it. I'll sort babe, this out. Watch this. Yeah, that would be great. Inner monologues when a ball rolls to you in the park. Let me know what goes through your mind. That would be great. Uh, and then you do a little jog, don't you? You kick it and you do a tiny little jog, and then back to a walk. Yeah, yeah, nice. Ego, ego, boys. Ego, boys. Ego, boys. <laughs> no, nah, don't worry about it. Don't worry hey, about it. no problem. No problem. What's um? Do you know sometimes problem is if it's the ball sort of rolled near you, but it's sort of like. It's sixty percent to you, forty yeah. percent to you. It's not equidistant. How? It's closer to you, but it's it's not yeah. your ball. So do you do step you go? towards the ball? Do you do you go? Go? Yeah, yeah. It's like it's like a, a running cricket. It's like it's like yeah. that. Yeah, but you, and you're like, I really want to kick that ball. Sure. I really want to kick the ball. Of course you do. How far out? How how? In terms of the circumference, how many feet away from you? What's the longest? What's the biggest circumference? For me, it's a... Uh, yeah, because you don't want to be, like, busy either. No. If it's 15 yards, but the pitch is 30, is that you? Big Dad says leave it always. Power move. Oh, but it's I a football, kick isn't it? it? I, I want, want to kick, kick it. it. Yeah. But I, I know I can play. Ball. That's yes. the thing. I want everyone in the park to see me really float this ball back to them. I think it's got to be... It's got to <laughs> kind of be in your path. Feet. Any ball 50 feet from me, I'm having. <laughs> Ideally, it's within your path. In your direction. So if the ball is travelling towards you, that's yours. If it's away from you, you've got to make a decision. Yeah, you've got to call to mate, yeah. yeah. I also think percentages are important here. If it's 15%, like, if it's 85% closer to you than to them, you're doing them a favour, so it's okay. Yeah. And what, what, what happens if you kick the ball and they don't go, cheers, mate? They yeah, just turn. smash the place up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, lose it. Prick. Just do that. You're uh, welcome. Yeah, I I had a I played I played golf with um Joe Tomlinson, Zach Jalab, and JCC, who's a streamer. And uh, we uh, was this old this old guy had had a go at us, told us to hurry up, basically. Oh, you, you ate that on the golf court, don't you? You ate yeah, it. Yeah, I don't like that. And and it was nonsense as well, right? And uh, 
I said, I said, sorry. And he went, you heard. Yeah. And I went, no, I didn't hear. That's why I said, sorry. Yeah, and he, you, he went, what is it? He basically is saying uh, like, you need to hurry up because the guys in front are ahead of you. It was like nonsense. They never got anywhere near us. Anyway, it was, it was living in Joe's head rent free for the rest of the round, which was a shame. I was trying to get him to what, let it go, but he couldn't. What was, was he? Ang- was he angry? He was annoyed. But I, George, what was gutting was there was then a hole later on where he'd hit the ball over to sort of the two holes are side by side. You know, like you go this way and then you go that way, and he'd hit it over this side and we were teeing off. And if he'd just been able to stay there a little bit longer, I was desperate to get over there and goes, just a just a quick one. If you are gonna have to come over onto our hole, could you just give us a just keep an eye out because otherwise, you, you know, we don't want you getting hit. Just say something like something like yeah. around the rules of what, like what the, is the sixty-five year old should know. That's Jim what I wanted to do, but I never got got to do what, it. What Jim? What Jim? What what's the etiquette if they hit the ball onto your hole, but and then you with a driver just go walk up to their ball and just smash it out of the park? Yeah, does that go down well? I don't think it would. Um, um, just <laughs> on just on the ball thing. Jim, Joshua Savile's come up with a blinder here. Just a simple rule. It can't be behind you. If the ball's behind you, <laughs> yeah, it's not yeah, yours. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's you can't good. turn and <laughs> yeah, go after yeah, it. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you're right, Joshua. And you can't say, I'll get it. Can't say that. No, it's too busy. It's too it's much. It's so busy. I'll get it. Can't do that. No, 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 no. Right. Yeah, uh, gotta, let's yeah. finish off with some Nosh chat, shall we? Excellent. A happy ending, if you will. So uh, uh, last week, come. <laughs> sorry guys, I've just come. The so <laughs> guys, we were chatting last week. We were chatting about um, one of the guys who'd got um, two blow jobs in a week, and it, yeah. it led to him being somewhat suspicious. I don't believe him. Which I understood. I understand it. Elliot Lacey said, "My theory on Kieran's double noshing <laughs> is I reckon she gave him one on the spur of the moment, and then thought, oh." Yeah. It seemed like he really enjoyed that, and gave you another few days later. I hope that I hope that is the answer. But you, but you, yeah. you there has to be some form of suspicion there. Uh, Elliot Lacey, uh, also same person, replied again. Said, "I've been with my partner for five and a half years. I haven't had a nosh in around twenty-seven around twenty-seven months. <laughs> 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 around." Around 27, 27 months, six days, four hours. If I was to get one now, I'd feel an overwhelming sense of elation, coupled with anxiety and suspicion. I don't know whether I'm hoping for one or dreading for one. <laughs> Tough, isn't it? I, I, can, I, can I ask? Can I ask you a question? What's his name? Elliot. Elliot, let me ask you a question. When did you last buy her flowers? Eh? Mm. When did you last treat her like a princess? Where? When was the last time you noshed her off? Yeah, well, yeah. When that you just went and can I uh, just go down on you? When yeah. when's the last time you said that? And it might be that he insists on it every day, but maybe he might be on that three to one is... ratio. Maybe he's that kind of guy. I don't know. Yeah, it's, it is. It is. It is. It is a, th- a thing where men just think, "Well, oh, I haven't had a blowjob." I'm not sure women are walking around when he hasn't gone down on me. <laughs> I, I honestly don't think about is it. Is the equivalent? Is that is that the equivalent? Like, if, if like buying flowers is what a woman might want in this really stereotypical world I've got in my head right now, and the equivalent <laughs> yeah. of getting flowers is 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 blowjobs. Is that what men really want? Um, yeah. when, if, if, if she if she if you if the if, if the woman buys the man flowers, it's not generally. I'm not gonna. I'll be like, oh, that's lovely, but I'm, it's weird. I'm not gonna. <laughs> I'm not gonna feel like I would if I was getting a blowjob. Sure. Yeah, I hear what you're saying. I mean, I think, well, I guess flowers is a nice touch, isn't it? Yeah, it's a lovely touch. And the blowjob is a nice touch, isn't it? So it's, maybe. Yeah, it's a nice thing to do. So maybe, maybe, Catherine maybe. just says there are a lot of work. Flowers. Yeah, well, sometimes it's good thing. Like, <laughs> <laughs> you've got the food, you've got water in them. They are, the noshies are a lot of work. Got to look, got to look at them. If you've, um, maybe save this for next week, but so. Sex, nosh, tug. You've got to get rid of I'd... one of them. Which one are you getting rid of? Tug, oh, obviously. Oh, really? I mean... What, what are you tugging yourself? Oh. What no. Are you, what are you, you enjoy being tugged by other people, do you? <laughs> Not what, one person specifically. <laughs> Just to be clear. What do you mean? 
No, 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 not like. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> like, don't, <laughs> Craig, oh, do you mind? Shit, you wouldn't mind. Just give that a little. No, no. I just meant in the in the sort of what's it what's it called the in the sex pathway. If you lose one, we've lost Flav, by yeah. the way. And but it's a uh, tug has to go. Interesting. Yeah, obviously. Okay. Last comment, and then we'll uh, we'll leave it there. Sam Hansen, a couple of points from me. First of all, love the addition of the... Oh, no, that's something different. Oh, no, so that is your NOS chat done. There you go. Uh, it's a good time to go, because Flav camera's gone. Uh, guys, thank you very much for joining us this week. Become a patron if you'd like to. Thank you to our patrons. Link's in the description. Uh, have a wonderful weekend. We will see you next week. Hit the like button on the way out, because it gives the podcast a chance. Thank you so much. Love you all very much. Go and give yourselves a good tug. Yeah, off you go. Everyone off and go get a tug by someone or yourselves probably. Right, guys. 